Welcome back, Achievers, to your Easy Achievers Gaming Podcast for the week of August 13th. God, it's already August. I'm one of your hosts, Elijah, sitting across me as always, achieving like he normally does, sitting in his house, coming through me virtually through the internet cables. Alex. God, that was a long one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> how you guys doing? Uh, how are you, Alex? I feel tired today. Mm. Like it's, hit, it, it's hit me today. Mm. Can this have anything to do with the oatmeal review we did yesterday? <laughs> oh my god. I gotta tell you, you know, doing the podcast, we've done this for about a year now. And you do, and I've come with the eye of content now. And mm-hmm. we really should have done something about that. We really should have like recorded that or something. That was hilarious. <laughs> if you don't know, and of course you don't, because you don't, you know, live with us. Alex tried oatmeal for the first time last night, um, yeah. and, I, and for some reason, I get me second time. Okay, yeah, sorry, second time. First, first time, first it was time in a long time, and I, and I hated it. If, look, oatmeal tastes good. And you have just I, bad taste. Clearly. I, wa- I wanted it to. I wanted it like to. Like, I wanted it to die. Yeah. <laughs> it, and he had tried it for the first time yesterday in like the modern realm of oatmeal. So he stirred some up. First off, the, for some reason, it says use two thirds milk. That's way too much. I don't know why. When you use a measuring cup, that's way too much milk to put in there. But yeah, he did it, and it, beca- it, it became – it really did look like a swamp that you said. Like, it, it was oh, just – it was God. a little it bit of oatmeal. Soup. Yeah, it's soup. And I remember you going, is it supposed to look like soup? And I'm like, definitely not. <laughs> yeah, Michael, it's been for two minutes already. Is this supposed to look it's supposed to be gone? Like, it's still here. Oh, but we're not an oatmeal appreciation podcast. No, 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 no. Of course not. We are a never will be. Never, <laughs> never will be. No, we are a video game podcast. We come to you every single Friday to the podcast service or YouTube of your choice. You go over there. You give us all the likes, all the subscriptions, all the shares to help us out. Now, if you like us even more than that, of course. You can support us now. Yes, I know. You can support us more. You can go over to patreon.com slash easy achievers. If you can give us a bucket if it's financially, what would capable? that be? Acceptable? Ca- capable as much. Yeah, financially capable. Of course, we're in the middle of a virus, so I understand. But if you have the buck, you can toss it over. Patreon.com slash easy achievers. You get an exclusive every single month of the year. That's 12 hours of exclusive content only for you and there's of course much more tiers that you can go through and there is a dedicated messaging service you can talk to us directly about the show now let's get into the show and before we get into the actual news alex i have a singular question for you today Mm. what happened with apple and fortnite now we in here we usually go over what we've talking about what we've been gaming but i think this is way more interesting we're gonna skip straight to the meat today all right apple has kicked off fortnite from their app store this is via the verge they had a great write-up so i didn't want to just do a whole write-up myself they had a very good write-up summarizing basically everything you need to know so i'm gonna go into the depths me and alex will then talk it out afterwards so apple has removed Epic Games Battle Royale game Fortnite from the App Store after the developer on Thursday implemented its own in-app payment system that bypassed Apple's standard 30% fee. This decision marks a significant escalation in the feud between Epic and one of the world's most dominant mobile software marketplaces. It also comes at an especially fraught time for Apple as an iPhone maker navigates antitrust concerns over its operations of the App Store and the rule it imposes on certain developers. Epic implemented its own payment system in the Android version of Fortnite as well, but Google has yet to take any form of action and did not immediately respond for comments. So as of this piece of media was spread out, Google did not do any action. But about an hour ago our time, so this is Friday, it's around 9 p.m. is when we're doing it. Uh, sorry, it's Thursday. Thursday. Thursday, it's around 9 p.m. for us. About an hour ago, around 8 o'clock, Google did the same thing, took it off their service, and they followed suit with exactly what they did to Apple. So we're going to get to that at the very end, what happened. Apple said in a statement to The Verge that it plans to work with Epic to, quote, resolve these violations, end quote, but it has no intention to create a, quote, special arrangement, end quote, for the company. Here's the company's statement in full. Today, 
Epic Games took the unfortunate step of violating the App Store guidelines that are applied equally to every developer and designed to keep the store safe for our users. <laughs> As a result, their Fortnite app has been removed from the store. Epic enabled a feature in its app which was not reviewed or approved by Apple. Interesting that they used that uh, verbiage there. And they did so with the express intent of violating the App Store guidelines regarding in-app payments that apply to every developer who sells digital goods or services. Epic has had its own apps on the App Store for a decade and have benefited from the App Store ecosystem including its tools, testing, and distribution that Apple provides to all developers. Epic agreed to the App Store terms and guidelines freely and we're glad they've built such a successful business on the app store <laughs> the fact that their business interests now led them to push for a special arrangement does not change the fact that these guidelines create a level playing field for all developers and make the store safe for all users <laughs> we will make every effort to work with epic to resolve these violations so they can return fortnite to the store now you might be asking elijah these are none of these are funny why are you laughing because this is probably the most pr garbage i've probably ever met in my life we are worried about the safety where is this we're worried about the safety of our users no they're not they they are upset that they're not getting their money that is that is that, there's nothing to do with the safety of, of who they're now let's get back to uh the article for those who may not know and this is me coming in i, I we ended the verge article but for those who may not know apple like it says does enforce a 30 percent cut of all sales through the app store i know you may be asking yourself well everyone else abides by this so why is it a big deal for epic to do this the main reason is Things like this are not created equally. For instance, um, Amazon has done a reduction in fees before that from their 30% to their 15%. I believe that was through their ebook sales, um, if I'm remembering correctly. And also, this is not equal. This may be equal in the video game space. This is not equal in other spaces. For instance, uh, things like DoorDash and food service delivery does not get the same fees that we are applied. So the, the argument is that they've monopolized a feature of the App Store that is not maintained equally and is being in proportionally dealt through video games now on top of all of this mess they epic has filed a legal complaint but it is lengthy so i'm not going to tell you everything here but i will cite the rough estimate i went through about a what five pages i couldn't read that whole thing it's a 65 very long but they do a lot of grievances of what they have with their policies the main one is the monopolization of the app store they make a lot of money there and they can essentially make their own rules so they're arguing that they are making anti-competitive rules and i'm going to bring in a quote straight from their legal statement quote epic is not seeking monetary compensation from this court for the inquiries it has suffered nor is epic seeking favorable treatment for itself a single company instead epic is seeking injudicative relief to allow fair competition in these two key markets that directly affect hundreds of millions of consumers and tens of thousands, if not more, of third-party app developers, end quote. And this comes, of course, on the back of last week, Apple was coming to scrutiny for denying Microsoft's Project X Cloud service on their app store, citing same guideline breakage, whatever you want to call it, um, silly things that basically means they want to make money off everything. And as of another update, everything that has been said can also now be applied to Google. They did the exact same in that purchase feature. Google has now removed them from their store and uh, for, uh, uh, Epic Games also gave them the same legal statement. <laughs> Whoo! It's funny because you, uh, when Fortnite first came to mobile, the only way to be able to get it, you had to go through yep. Samsung. Yeah, so you had to go through Samsung, and they're, they're actually saying do that same exact thing now. They yeah, are like, e I don't know why they ever changed. Yeah, they're like because uh, they eventually. I read about that too. They eventually caved to Google and put it on the store mm -hmm. because they no, no one uses the loop around. Um, yeah. They, I assume, their numbers are much better when they're actually on the store rather than. This weird website you got to go to to get it here, et cetera, et cetera. Alex, there's a lot of mumbo jumbo in all this. Essentially, we can say Epic wants fees gone or at least lowered or at least mm -hmm. stopping an anti. It's essentially a monopoly on these platforms. Same thing that Google. Yeah. It seems that they are wanting an even playing ground for everybody. What do you think of all this? This is a mess, of course, of legal jargon and and it can be argued who has a case and who doesn't it's everywhere 
Um, it, also to note, they did do an awesome commercial. I know. I don't know if you know this, Alex, but in I believe it was, was it nineteen eighty four? They did. I think they did. I think it was nineteen eighty four. They did a commercial about nineteen eighty four. The book. Now, if you don't know the book, it's a very. It, just Google it. Just read. The, it's basically corporations eventually take over the world, et cetera, et cetera. But Apple did a. Uh, uh, kind of a anti-consumerism, anti like m- monopolization, um, commercial that scrutinized everyone else and saying like Apple was releasing the Macintosh, so 1984 won't be 1984, referencing the book, of course. Now, <laughs> Epic Games did the exact same commercial overplayed in Fortnite, but this being Fortnite fighting against Apple. And they literally grab a hammer and throw their hammer through the screen at an apple. So it is awesome. That is like so specifically nerdy for me. I love it. It's funny. Now, Alex, we got a mess. What do you think? Um, I, man, it's, I mean, I understand Apple wants all the money but come on now really <laughs> this is interesting right because i understand where they're coming from where it's like hey it's 30 percent for every developer but that is a lot of money for they're providing a platform of course but they mm. hold the majority of the market people are arguing that the market is ba- almost evenly distributed between apple and let's say samsung and android whatever you want to call it but mm-hmm. that but that is not in revenue. In revenue, Apple is hugely over, uh, oh, sure. uh, overstated in actual revenue. So the actual money is coming from Apple's uh, space. So the argument is that they're holding all of these cards and all of this money, and they're withholding it from actual uh, the developers who actually make this up. And they're citing all these anti-competitive rules. Again, with xCloud, I'm sure that's hinting at that we all know what happened there they literally told us i mean they didn't tell us but you could read between the lines they're not getting paid for it so they don't care they don't want it on their the platform and i'm sure apple does not want any streaming stuff on there they they, they still don't have stadia on there so i don't even think that'll happen but oh no that's yeah yeah so this is a mess everything's on fire now if you do have fortnite already downloaded that is not a problem there's nothing happening to the one you existing and you can still make payments now, and another thing to note, the in-app version, so the workaround Epic Im- implemented, did give you a discount. So it does make everything cheaper in the store because of the 30% fee is gone. So, for instance, if a, uh, the $20 skins are now $15, and, and you know, mm. it, just as an example, everything yeah. got cheaper in the store. So okay. Epic, Epic Games is literally playing a, a chess game. They made everything cheaper. They wanted to prove as a fact, like, hey, the only reason this stuff is as expensive as it is is because we're getting charged an exuberant free. So they put the work around yeah. in. They make everything cheaper through their end. They prove that, hey, we're going to be a good guy and make everything cheaper if if they would just let us. And then Apple does the Apple thing. They take them down the store. Then they hit them with the, the legal complaint slash monopolistic uh, counter view of the 65 pages. Now... Plot thickens, plot thickens, plot thickens, right? It's there's so much going on, and this is one of those things where it's just, but it's it's a huge billion dollar business finding another huge billion dollar business. I'll be very interested to see where this ends up. Yeah, it's definitely gone. It's not in the app store anymore. No, yeah, it's not in the app store. They're gone from both Google and the app store, so you cannot download it if you do not have it. And who yeah, knows how quick. long this will last? Who knows uh, what the next move is? I, for one, am on the side of Fortnite on this. The, oh, for sure. I, I think this needs to be worked around with. There, it, there is honestly zero excuse why there is all of these other services that aren't charged the same fee. Mm-hmm. That that does not. Now, people argue that PS4 and Xbox also have this fee. I do believe it's it's slightly different because it's the actual console manufacturers, and it's again everyone's equal. It's it's not the fact that it's thirty percent. It's just all equal, rather than there's. Apple is clearly doing things that is in, is monolithically it's it's ridiculous destroying com- competition. I feel, I feel like if they would lower that percent fee, I feel like they would just have so much more uh, like people come to like to the to that space to play it. 
Well, I mean, this is definitely a, a, a death of a thousand cuts, right? Because we're getting Project X Cloud people upset. We're getting Fortnite. Mm-hmm. First off, if there's someone you don't want to get upset, it's the Fortnite. All right. Oh, <laughs> like, God, no, yeah. like those children, they're, like those, they're those coming for your legs. Like those kids on the iPad you <laughs> can't even get on Fortnite no more. They're coming, they're coming for your legs. Right? But yeah. so I I think this is a misstep from Apple. They're, they'll figure it out, I'm sure. Um, mm-hmm. I honestly, I liked the ad uh this doesn't benefit me in any way regardless of what happens in any of this i do want to see the fee go away i want to see apple loosen up because they are like the definition of corporate like at least drop it eat like i don't know i don't i don't want to say evil because i don't think they're evil but they're like corporate like like gross they're just gross about Mm -hmm. a lot of things they have a lot of dumb rules the project x cloud thing their dumb statement about how they're pretending like it's not because they can review each game it's like get out of here like this is so much silly little things that apple's trying to be like oh we can't review it for your safety no stop it it's because they want to charge every single game that's on there yeah of course it is they want to they don't want you to be able to do something that they don't get money from it's 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 obvious so you know don't let them it's skew your change of course i want to know your opinion tweet at us leave a comment below what do you think about all this this is literally a garbage fire that i love watching and i cannot wait to see what happens from all this epic has proven time at a time that it's generally doing good stuff generally for instance they lowered their fees on the epic game store to developers getting more money i believe they uh lowered theirs to 13 percent on the epic game store so more developers are getting money on their platform Plus, they lowered the cut from using Epic uh, Unreal Engine. They lowered the cut there as well. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. it's proof over proof. Of course, these are both corporations. They don't really care about their well-being. They want to make more money. But I think there are there could be some good coming from all of this. We'll see. We shall see. Alex, let's mm. move from one fire and drive to another one. Halo Infinite delayed to 2021. Microsoft has announced that Halo Infinite will be delayed past its expected launch alongside the Xbox Series X and will arrive sometime in 2021. No specific date was given. Also, if you want to, you can swallow this news a little bit better because Microsoft then quickly announced literally like 30 minutes later that the release month for the Series X is confirmed for November. Now, Alex, very sad, of course, for Halo. Yeah. I'm upset. I want to get. Yeah. I want to. I want to give three four three their time to explain what happened. So this mm-hmm. is a full statement strict from the studio head at um, three four three. This is Chris Lee. This is from their d- Twitter today. I want to share an important Halo Infinite development up- update with the community. We have made a difficult decision to shift our release to 2021 to ensure the team has adequate time to deliver a Halo game experience that meets our vision. Uh, the decision to shift our release is the result of multiple factors that contributed to development challenges, including the ongoing COVID-related impacts affecting us all this year. I want to acknowledge the hard work from our team at 343 Industries, who have remained committed to making a great game and finding solutions to development challenges. However, it is not sustainable for the well-being of our team or the overall success of the game to ship it this holiday. We know this will be disappointing to many of you, and we should all share in that sentiment. The passion and support of the community has shown over the years has been incredible and inspiring. We wanted nothing more than to play our game with the community this holiday. The extra time will let us finish the critical work necessary to deliver the most ambitious Halo game ever at the quality we know our fans expect. Thank you for your support and understanding. Chris Lee, studio head of 343. I'm not against it. I'm not against it. And the the tw- the tired thing I'm sure everyone has heard is, yeah, you know, good game. Let's let's make sure it gets good, right? I, gets, I, of, yeah, co- I of course am not upset to doing a game. It is yeah, upsetting. If it, needs time, if it needs time, give it time. Yeah, it is upsetting I won't have a Halo game at launch. I think that was going to be a very enticing thing for the majority of the audience. I was going to mm-hmm. buy the Series X regardless if this thing came out or not. Mm-hmm. But they said before releasing it, they're actually debating on if they should like do it in pieces, but they decided just to lay it instead. Well, thank you for bringing that up, Alex. Over! on animal talking yes that's right animal talking what is that animal what is that talking. that is a show made run by rogue one yes that's right star wars rogue one writer gary Witta. he has an in-game shaco inside of animal crossing called animal talking and yes he did get phil spencer on it's all in game and he talked to him on the thing 
Speaking of the in parts, Spencer did bring this up. They decided to, uh, in, in decision of handling delay, they did think about shipping the game out in parts. Um, there was a rumor ahead of launch that the game's free-to-play multiplayer could come after launch, but Spencer said that Xbox did not want to do this. So they did not want to do, give you piecemeal. They want to give you everything at once. Alex actually brought this up the day I told him about it. And I didn't. Th- mm-hmm. I never even thought about it as an option, but that is not a terrible idea to release the full multiplayer suite with Battle Royale attached or something like that. I think... I don't think it would have been a bad idea, but I get the reason why not. Because you don't get the hype of the launch. You get, like... You you really get it, like, in pieces, and the hype isn't as hype because you don't get the... No, single, for sure. You don't get the single player attached to it or something, so... I mm-hmm. get it. You might as well wait and, and bundle everything together and have it super polished rather than have it half polished and not as good. Yeah. But I... I'm super like upset, bummed. Like I'm not gonna get the game on time, but I at least will get a better game. Hopefully, it looks good. Hopefully, it, it feels great. It does look and feel like Halo so far. So, hopefully, they just keep nailing it. Yep. And speaking of that interview, I can do a couple other things. I will finish off what I wrote down here. While he knows that the people are quote bummed about the game's delay, he also believes it's the right move. And the decision would have been he he also brings up and a decision he would not have been able to make five or ten years ago, which is very interesting. Spencer says he has Microsoft's full support in this decision, even though it would have been nice for Series X to be the first system since the original Xbox to launch with a Halo game. It would have been huge for the system. And I, I know, I, I sure. literally think he is bummed. Like, he's like, wow, that would have no, probably no, sold sure. a lot of the systems. But he'll, but he doesn't mind taking a backseat. He also reiterates that the system itself will not be delayed and reminds us again that he has had one at home since last year. After playing games on the Series X, he says, quote, hard to go back to Xbox One as games feel better on the new system. Spencer also teased that more, quote, big, end quote, Game Pass announcements are coming. Many of the game announced for Series X so far are heading to Game Pass. When do you think we're going to get this? The system? The announcement. Of the big, oh, the big games. The big games, yeah. Um, it will be in their last, probably, like, big you... system overview show thing, probably. Like, when they go mm-hmm. to announce pre-order prices and, and, and like, how to... This month or next month? Oh, ooh, ooh, oh, God, that's a good question i think it's uh, close to the end I, of this month i th- i think it would probably be next month i think the last week of this month like the 20 the, like the 20 something like so, somewhere around that week now there are rumors i didn't cover on here because there are rumors but there are rumors that playstation is waiting till the first week like they're waiting till september to give price to to mm-hmm. make xbox do it first now it's, if that makes xbox do it first regard like that's up to phil spencer and the team but i i thought that was very interesting on on them arguing like hey yeah we're just gonna wait till september and um we're just gonna wait because our guys are gonna buy it regardless of what the price is i feel like playstation is still playing this whole console war thing uh, yeah and i think i don't know i'm it's just like dude, relax it's not we're not fighting anymore i I'm, i think it's very interesting because with with the xbox series x team like they said they're going to be flexible on price months ago. Now, what that mm-hmm. means is, to me, is can mean a lot of things. Are I think flexible price really means that the Lockhart. I don't think it really means Xbox Series X. I think no, Series no, no, X no, five hundred bucks, no, literally no. regardless of what PS Five is. The PS Five could be three hundred dollars. I'd be like, well, this one's five hundred bucks. But yeah. Lockhart is there for people who need the the extra extra limbo, you know. And there mm. was also rumors. That Lockhart's launching at two fifty without a controller. Really? Yeah. Without a controller. So the the reasoning is you already have a controller. You use your existing controllers on the new system. These are all, of course, rumors. Huh. Could be an obsession. It it could be garbage. Could couldn't mean anything. But interesting to think about. Um, they it was. What happened to the people that don't have didn't have one to begin with? You buy one, I guess. Oh, yes. Yeah. I, I, I assume that's what you do. Because hmm. you'd need a controller. Yeah. I think these are all very interesting takes. Alex, anything of a major takeaway from you? I do think the... It gets me excited. Big Game Pass announcement. Like, that means so much. And Phil Spencer is so careful to not even give hints. 
and there are really yeah, no hints to what he's saying. Good with those. Yeah, so I I do wish he gave us some sort of hint because my mind races with that. Like, I think big Game Pass announcements. I think it's uh, they're gonna announce the X Cloud release, um, because well, well they it, already it, announced that, right? Did, did they? September fourteenth, I mean, wasn't it? Oh, is it September? Um, you keep talking. Let me check. Okay, yeah, because I was thinking, I was like, oh, I mean, they're gonna say uh, they're gonna say when you know Game Pass is gonna be, um, like the like the release date, uh, what's all entails, all the like they said many of the many of the games announced for Xbox Series X, like m- new ones that are coming out. I guess they can he could they could do like a whole another like oh it's available now September type of September fifteenth fifteenth okay Project X Cloud will launch on Game Pass Ultimate. Again, you have to have Game Pass Ultimate. They have well, not. Maybe that's when. Maybe that's when the Game Pass announcement can happen. They'll be like, "Oh, it's available now." I don't. I mean, that's not the big Game Pass announcement because we knew about that. Mm. So I, I think I think it's something we don't know. I think it's either something big with all of our Xbox services, or it's like they got a big game and they're like, "Hey, it's on Game Pass" or something like that. Like, well, remember like what they said about the services. Yeah, that too. Speaking of services, a statement from The Verge, Microsoft, about the future of their service is as follows. Quote, the update to the Xbox Online service in the Microsoft Service Agreement refers to an underlining Xbox service that includes features like cross-saves and friend requests, says a Microsoft spokesperson in a statement to The Verge. Quote, this language update is intended to distinguish that underlying service and the paid Xbox Live Gold subscription. There are no changes being made to the experience of the service or Xbox Live Gold. Now, this was, uh, I wanted to bring this up because last week we did cover some things about Mm -hmm. uh, my suspicion that something is happening with gold. Now, I do also think something is happening with gold. I honestly... I think something's happening with it, but I don't think it's going away. And it's not. I don't think it's going away. This statement means nothing, literally. It All it says is there are no changes being made uh, to the experience of the service or Xbox Live Gold. Like, it, uh, well, okay, why did you get rid of the year membership then? What, well, like, why? Why, did, why would you do that then? There, something is going on, promise you. They don't voluntarily say no more money. Like, they, they, there's something's going on. I smell it. <laughs> I smell it, it, all right? And speaking of Series X and S and smelling things, (laughs) Mm -hmm. Xbox Series X and S could launch November 6th, according to controller leaks. Now, this was something actually Alex added on uh, a little bit right before the show, so I wanted to bring this up really quickly. Um, There has been boxes of the Series S controller found in the wild. And one of the Series X controllers uh, branders the Microsoft limited to w- limited warranty for the Series S controller, mm-hmm. and it appears to end on November fifth, twenty twenty one. And their warranties cover a year after purchase, purchase, which suggests November fifth or sixth to be the release date. That's very interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's probably either pretty close or I mean you're either you're probably like maybe a week off if, if anything. I think well, it's probably November sixth. Yeah, well, there's a picture also uh, Tom Warren has of the boxes of controllers, and it, says, it has the orange label, and it says, do not sell or display before November 6, 2020. Yeah, that too. Like, I I, th- I think this is probably basically spot on. This is probably no, 100%. Sure. This is probably 100% lock-in. It's probably well, November original, 6. I, not, I don't think the original, but the re- Xbox One X. That one came out the 4th, I believe, November 4th. That sounds right. So it's, yeah. around, so it's around the same time. That sounds right. Alex, uh, I'm sorry, it was November 7th. All of this put together into one giant statement. Are you still excited for Series X? Oh, for sure. Of course, of course, right. Now, with the the people that are upset about Halo, I get it. We got Game Pass. Just remember, this mm-hmm. will 100% be the best launch of a console ever. Not including, like, let me back up. This will be the best launch lineup for a console ever because Game Pass exists. If you have Game Pass for $10 a month, you will get a laundry list of games at launch that no other system has ever done that. Usually the launch lineup is garbage. <laughs> Usually. like Let's all remember the PS4 and Xbox One days. Kills on the shelf all great. I didn't like it. Um, uh, Rise, Son of Rome. 
It was it was fine. Dead Rising Four, fine. Like they're they're not great games, but with the addition of Game Pass and backwards compatibility, oh boy, I'm excited. I am very excited. I could care. I I could I can take a Halo Infinite loss because I still have a Game Pass to look forward to, and all of those big, games. Big Game Pass announcements. I'm wondering if they're gonna make gold free. I told you this last week. I think I think I think they might. Yeah, I think they might. Like, like I feel like we were thinking of. I think they're still keep the regular gold paid subscription. So if you want just gold, but now I think the Game Pass Ultimate. I feel like they're gonna add gold into it. Like, like if you have I Game Pass you Ultimate, last week, you were a naysayer last week. You you're coming I, around to my side. Well, see, no, the thing is, I, you, I don't know, man. I, it's, it, it, it looks like it, man. I, it, like, if they make it free, to, if free, man, it would, it would be crazy. Alex, come to the dark side, man. All right, come to the dark side. We have cookies, okay? Just yeah. come, just come up. As come long up. as they're not oatmeal. <laughs> and on that note, we're going over to Rock State's Twitter account. Yes, they have announced it. They are making a Suicide Squad game. They're going to be at DC Fandom August twenty second. That is going to be about a week uh, from you listening to this with your beautiful ears. That's right, your beautiful, beautiful ears. The uh, uh, the announcement came via their Twitter account. Target locked. That's all it says, and it is a beautiful picture of our boy Superman with a some with a crosshair uh, on his head and the word Suicide Squad written in. And boy, Alex. I am excited now. D- now to bring up, Superman does look corrupted in some way. He 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 looks like there is something wrong with him. So it looks like there is going to be some sort of there's something going on. Yeah, he's it, there's a very deep purple aurora uh, aura around him. Like he's saturated in purple. And if you if you zoom into his head, it's cracked, and his laser eyes look pinkish. Like it, it, nothing, everything looks wrong about him. So I think some something's come in. The Justice League has been compromised. Your probably main, your main antagonist is probably Superman, and yeah. the whole game is probably centered around slowly getting power to to eventually fight against Superman. Something happens where he, I guess, maybe he could become bad, and yeah. Amanda Waller's like, "All right, Squad, it's Suicide Squad. You, this is your target." Yeah, like they, <laughs> they're like, they, "What?" There's so, there's so many like storylines in my head. Right, Starro comes out. He uses his little thing to to get people. Brainiac has his mind control device. Like, mm-hmm. there's so many different things. I don't think it's an alternate universe thing. I don't think we're getting Ultraman or anything like that. I, I just hope it's not too much like Injustice. Because remember, he he he, yeah. he went bad in that one. Yeah, that see they're treading interesting ground, right? Because they got the Suicide Squad movie that was bad. No one really liked. And then there's another one, the reboot. And then they're rebooting it. So so there's a lot of Suicide Squad happening where not many people care about it. We have Injustice coming out soon, which is also going to divert attention. And also there's a bad Superman in that. So like it, there's just a lot of similarities. Yeah. Um, speaking of Injustice 3, uh, it looks like the Watchmen are going to be in it. Now, this was teased by Boss Logic. He is a very good artist. Um, he posted... Injustice 3 and the E is a 3 it's turned um, upside down and if you look in his little thing uh, in the left corner of this little image it says uh, uh, sorry it didn't say anything it's, it has the wa- uh, comedy button from Watchmen um, in the very left corner and, oh I see it yeah it is it's gonna get, it's starting to get interesting Alex so we definitely have an Injustice 3 coming we knew from, I believe it was last week or the week before, Tom Taylor was um, hinting at some sort of injustice content, mm. and now we got this. I am excited. We we've got injustice. We've got Rock City's game. We're gonna get WB Montreal's game with the Batman game. A fun side note: all of our rumors did tend out to be true. I believe Jason Schreier did comment that at some point. WB Montreal was making a Suicide Squad game that did get canceled, and Rocksteady picked this game up. So, mm-hmm. so that that explains the weird rumors over the years, and it's still turning out to be true. Alex, you still excited? August twenty second, man. We'll know we'll know much more about oh, this stuff. We'll get a full look at Injustice Three. Watchmen's gonna be in it, which is exciting. Yeah, yeah. I, um, I wonder what they're gonna do with Watchmen. Because there's so much that they that they've done like the old movie, then they had the new show, yeah, and then they have the comics, yeah, and then, like there's so much they can do. And they gotta do the, another thing where it's like they gotta like 
they have to like power down these people because mm-hmm. if you're gonna have Rorschach fight people, he's basically Batman. And he can't really fight. But also, yeah. you have the opposite with Doctor Manhattan, where he can literally vaporize everyone he touches. So we're gonna have to, you know, suspend our imagination a little bit when playing this game just like yeah. we did with the first two games but i won't have a problem with that i never really care about that stuff i want a cool video game and this looks like it's gonna be cool yeah no i'm excited i'm super excited moving on spider-man miles morales details have been revealed this was uh by tom coswell but i believe the uh the verge um and in in, in entertainment weekly interview expanding on what we can expect out of spider-man miles morales this was written by me but i took some excerpts from them uh, to round out the statement clearly the game will take place one year after the first title and will be a coming-of-age story that puts miles in the middle of a war between a massive energy corporation and a criminal syndicate that threatens to destroy the younger spider-man's home in harlem this comes from brian horton's the game director he compares the size of the game to uncharted lost legacy quote a smaller story but a more personal story end quote the game will feature peter parker in a mentor role helping miles hone his spider skills of which he will have new ones such as Bioshock and Invisibility. Horton explained that while these new abilities paired with unique animations will make for a different experience playing as Miles, the powers will be an extension of who Miles is as a character and his growth as a new Spider-Man. Miles will be a more social character, his origin born out of thriving familial bonds rather than the tragic loss of Peter's uncle, which made the seasoned Spider-Man a more distant protagonist. He then he then ends, ends it with a... Um, uh, with with him wanting to make sure he separates this Miles from the Spider Man we already know with Peter. Mm-hmm. Excited, I'm excited because it's gonna be. It, it, there was a screenshot that I saw that looks like it's gonna be in the holidays, so there's gonna be snow in and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, there was snow. It looks like there's there's more of a holiday atmosphere going around. It looks like they're prepping for Christmas, maybe. Mm-hmm. Uh, more not excitement enough game, not enough games get christmas seasons and yeah and it looks colorful too which which yeah we get a lot of dark and dreary like I, i'm i'm excited for color like bring let's bring some and color i like to changing it because with spider-man games it's always been you know just the same old new york yeah yeah you're gonna get slightly different uh slice of life out of this one too and it's yeah. just fun being spider-man so yeah we'll get oh, sure. we'll get to go back to that we'll get a bunch of new suits i'm sure um mm-hmm. it'll be shorter but i mean that's what you have to take if you want a faster game out right you you have to kind of accept it won't be as quickly brought out uh but it still probably has to be the same type of quality i mean it should be as good i think it will be i think it will be chock full of quality i don't i don't i trust insomniac at this point the their first game i adored so i cannot wait i cannot wait for this and i'm very excited for how they Excuse me. How to utilize their uh, abilities? He he does have much different abilities from Peter. Like again, oh, yeah. the shocking ability, the invisibility. So I'm excited to see how they utilize that. Maybe invisibility is used in in some sort of sneaking, like like almost Batman like takedowns. And the mm-hmm. Bioshock ability can be fused with your fights and your ult ultimates or something like that. Very excited. We shall see, Alex. Apparently, mm. Ubisoft loves spitting in my face. Sam Fisher is coming to Rainbow Six Siege. Now, Splinter. yeah, so if you don't know, me and Alex, huge fans of the Splinter Cell games, they are now again spitting in our face yet again with Sam Fisher coming as Agent Zero in Rainbow Six Siege. Uh, not much else to say. They literally released a trailer. You see the little three green night vision goggles on a gun and there's gonna be a full reveal hold on i had to I have to rewind i'm watching the video really quick to make sure i don't get anything wrong. Re- full reveal is august 16th so as of listening about two days cool i'm wondering is, whatever is, so does he just get added to the game or do you gotta buy him i'm sure you have to buy him <laughs> i'm sure i'm sure you have to buy him i doubt he'll be free it'll be awesome but i, d- I doubt he's free i'm sure he'll be like yeah. twenty dollars or something yeah, I don't know how Rainbow Six works. I've played it a handful of times. So the so the way they work is um, there's year passes. You don't really buy them in pieces. Oh, there's year gotcha. passes. So for instance, there's been six years of this game. So mm-hmm. if you buy the year six pass, you'll get everything in year six. Yeah, if you buy the year seven that. pass, yeah. If you buy the year si- seven pass, you'll get everything in the year seven. So that's just like an example. I, I think they'll do the same thing. Year eight, if you buy the pass, see, you'll get Sam Fisher probably immediately. Uh, make a Splinter Cell game for the love of God, Ubisoft. For the love of God, <laughs> I'm sure they're making one now, but Jesus, stop it! 
they put him in this MOBA game. They put him in Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon. They're, they're like, we'll, we'll give him other things, but we're not going to give him his own game. <laughs> uh, speaking of new games, Remedy's next game is currently being worked on, and it will take place in a Control and Alan Wake connected universe. Not much aside from that headline. Um, this came from the reveal trailer and their new expansion, AWE. It's their last expansion in their universe. It features Alan Wake's, and Remedy then announced the plans for the next game. Exciting. But not much to go on. We'll probably have to wait another three years for the game. But I am excited. Did you see that? Um, you can only if you buy the ultimate edition is how you get the next gen version for free. So thank you. I, that, this was a good uh, uh, bring up for you, Alex. People are very upset with that. So I'm going to specify why I don't believe. I don't think people are understanding. So. If you do the Ultimate Edition, it says you get a free upgrade. All Xbox One games are backwards compatible. So, you should be good if you already bought the game, right? Like, I don't really no. understand. That's, that's what they're saying. It's not going to be it's not gonna be backwards compatible unless you buy the Ultimate Edition. Now, are they saying a full like upgrade, like with extra specs, or because every? I mean, I mean, from what I read, it said that the 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 next gen version for PS uh, PS Five or Xbox Series X, you can get you can get the next copy for free, uh, uh, if you buy the Ultimate Edition. Hmm. That's all. It, that's all it said. So I'm like, that's because it kind of bothered me too. Because I'm like, oh, that's weird. I we'll have to see because this is very confusing. Every Xbox One game you own is backwards compatible. So I don't, I that like there's no there I, there shouldn't be a single game that's not gonna work when you buy the system. Um, they've been ba- they've been very strict on like yeah this it is says it, it limits its free next gen upgrades to its new forty dollar edition. So it, it I guess next gen can... upgrade like that to me that sounds like hey this is a next gen upgrade like we've enhanced things. So if you want the enhanced stuff you have to buy this thing. I guess so. Yeah. This is I mean, this is all very confusing, and they have not specified. So it's not really hmm. our fault for being confused. It is on Xbox, and it is on Remedy's side. Like you got to explain go. this stuff. Here we go. An article on IGN uh, by Joe Scribbles. Existing owners of Control on console won't get a free upgrade to PS5 or Xbox Series X versions, but those who buy a new Ultimate version will. Uh, the Ultimate version was announced today. It will be released on Steam August 27, followed by the Epic Game Store PS4 Xbox One versions on September 10. It will come with all previous upgrades and both of the game expansions. Um, let's see. Alongside the announcement came the news that those who bought the console versions of the Ultimate Edition will get a free digital upgrade to the new systems when they arrive. But those who already own the game on console will not. This is over on Ars Technia. This was released. <laughs> yeah, this was released yesterday. We're just gonna be arguing with different <laughs> articles. Yeah, yeah, right? This is know. this is Kyle Orlin. This is a basically oh, a a funny. roundup of how backwards compatibility works at the basic level. Both Microsoft and Sony are taking steps to ensure that most, if not all, of your current generation console game library will be playable on new consoles. For Microsoft, Most. this promise dates back to last June when Phil Spencer said, quote, your games, your achievements, your progression, your accessories, your console experience with Xbox. It all comes forward with Scarlet. At the time, it was codenamed Scarlet. That's Series X. Since then, Microsoft has clarified that, quote, existing Xbox One gamers, including backward compatible 360 and original Xbox games, will work on the new system. In addition to every Xbox One title, that compatibility list currently includes over 500 Xbox 360 games and 39 original Xbox games. So, th- so this sh- should work. Again, Microsoft has said every Xbox One game will be backwards compatible. That's, that exists. That's, that's what they said then. I don't. I think. I think I'm right on this one. I, I really think that they're like. Phil Spencer saying, "If you have bought the game, you are going to be able to play it on your new system." Period. I mean, I guess you can play. It. I guess it just won't be uh, enhanced, like you said. I think it's enhancement stuff. Now, this shouldn't be this complicated. If I'm wrong, 
why is it this complicated? <laughs> like, e- like why? Like, either everything's compatible or it's not, and they should stop saying that. If it is all compatible, these developers really need to like read PR and figure out what's going on, because that is a confusing thing I to feel do. Like, if anything, I feel like it's all on the the developer sides. Well, the devs would ha- definitely have to. I mean, yeah. Ch- choose like the. And this goes back to the NBA 2K20 thing, 20, 21 thing, right? Yeah, 21. Like, they said you have to buy the Mamba edition to get the free upgrade to the Series X. Yeah. The game should be backwards compatible, so how, why does it matter if you're buying the other one? This, again, this is way too confusing. I feel, like this, I feel like it's because they don't want the uh, some people, like, like they, they, I think they, it's a money thing. I think they just want... Of course. Some, it, yeah. No, of course. That's 100% the reason. But again, for some reason, Phil Spencer has said every Xbox One game will work on your new system. Either that's wrong or it's right. There is no like middle ground. He has said all of them works. If he is wrong, then he should 100% come out right now and be like, hey, I was wrong. 98% of your games will work. 2% are the devs that want more money out of you. Very, yeah. very curious if this, how this pans out. I, th- I think you're probably right though but it's probably just you i mean it, on your xbox series x you you'll get the the crappier version of the game not the be- the good version interesting interesting i think that's this what i think that i think that's what's gonna happen you I get your so xbox too. one version not your xbox series x version yeah yeah they'll have like little upgrades it'll probably be like a pc version at max settings or some garbage like that yeah but this is all very confusing moving on to something even more confusing twitch is rebranding it's going to be now known as Prime Gaming. Yeah. Doesn't that sound like some generic ass? <laughs> like it's now Prime Gaming it's to align <laughs> Yeah, to align all their services more accurately, Amazon announced that they will be changing the name to Twitch to Prime Gaming. Nothing else about the service is changing other than the name. All benefits you receive will still come directly to you. Like I said, nothing will change, nothing to freak and out the about. Covers and the logos. <laughs> Yeah, so there's a complete rebanding happening. This is to basically make everything a little more smoother. They have Prime Video, they have Prime Music. Now they will have Prime Gaming. So, so it, it makes it makes sense. The rebrand does make sense. I can't really be too upset about this because like, yeah, I get it. Twitch is ran like it's ran Twitch Prime. Like it doesn't even really make sense. So they should have done this honestly a long time ago. I don't know why they haven't. But we now have Prime Gaming, and we can never call it Twitch again. I'm still going to call it Twitch. I'm going to call it Twitch until I forget and call it Prime Gaming, which will probably be in like two weeks. Oh, probably. <laughs> oh, my God. And uh, so, uh, speaking of two weeks, I don't know. <laughs> Bioshock 4 seemingly <laughs> won't take place in Rapture or Columbia. Bioshock most likely will not return to previous settings if their job listings at Cloud Chamber are to believe. Here are some of the listings as is followed. Quote, we want you to help us breathe life into a new and fantastical world. End quote. Several draw wrestling reads together. We will set the stage for a stunning narrative and system driven experience. End quote. I thought it was kind of clear we wouldn't go back to Rapture in Columbia, but just in case you were you were worried, we we are not going back. Or I feel you like might be disappointed. Now, I feel like the new world is going to be at uh, at sea level, like on ground level. <laughs> I think it might be. In sp- I mean, the easy one is space, right? Now the problem with space is you are literally system shock, which is what bioshock mm. is based off of bioshock is a spiritual successor to the system shock series yeah. so if you go to space system shock was literally in space and if you look at system shock it looks literally like a bioshock game so i think they're just gonna do it on the ground like they've had done it in the sky they've done it underwater i mean what's left in the middle yes yeah in the middle so just yeah, normal so ground cities normal <laughs> yeah. i think they might do the moon or mars moon or mars I think has a chance. So you're saying, so you're saying, you're saying it, it goes beyond Earth. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I, I think it's either Moon or Mars, and it's gonna it's gonna be more Bioshock One and feel. I think, mm. in like creepy environment. So now I am describing System Shock, but System Shock has that remaster. But does really anyone care? They'd rather have a Bioshock game. So I think yeah. whatever the Bioshock comes out, it's gonna be more a more like spacey type thing. Now, do you think the big thing is, is, is there still a Big Daddy involved? Good question, Alex. No. You don't think so? No, there's probably some other thing. So they completely changed the whole... 
I like, like Big Daddy is their is their mascot. Well, they weren't an in infinite, so like, you know what I mean. The the uh, the thing that replaced Big Daddies were those dudes with the hearts in their chest. Yeah, that's those giant point, yeah. like robot people. So I don't I don't think Big Daddy stay. I think something new comes like some sort of weird robot or something. I don't know. I I, I would have to really sit down to really figure out what they would do for that game. It's it's very confusing. Mm-hmm. Alex, mm. that's the news for the week. A very long, very good discussions today. Uh, and now, at the end of the show, we usually sit back, relax, talk about a couple things. Oh, I wanted to bring something to your attention, Alex, on a, a, a fan favorite segment of the show. Shit I've seen on Twitter. Now, this is uh, another weekly segment of shit I've seen on Twitter. I get on Twitter a lot, and I just scroll through it until I find something awesome. I, <laughs> this is over on David uh, Scott Jaffe's Twitter account. A Godzilla museum just opened in Japan. Very soon they will open phase two that includes a zip line that lets you fly into Godzilla's goddamned mouth. Hell yeah. <laughs> the picture looks pretty pretty amazing. Now I wanna see if I can find some more information about this Godzilla uh Is that uh, the real picture of the thing or cause it, li- it literally it looks that should... like it just in straight out of Shin Godzilla. This, that looks like um a, pho- a Photoshop, like a, a okay, a, like that's what I thought. That okay. or that or a concept or something like that. Okay, because I was about to say that's literally the Shin Godzilla from the movie. At the need Nikajin, oh god, no Mori Park in Awaji, <laughs> Awaji Island. I'm so sorry, I'm butchering these guys. <laughs> Japan, the first I, Godzilla. I don't, I don't know where you're at. <laughs> I know, I know. I had to, I had to look this up. It's on Screen Rant if you want to look up Godzilla okay. Museum. Um, okay. is open for a limited time, complete with movie props, food, and more. The first movie dedicated to Godzilla is open in Japan for a limited time. Toho launched its official English Godzilla website back in May 2019, complete with a, quote, monsterpedia, end quote, for the uh, Kaiji's friends and foes. One can never overstate the pop culture impact of the Godzilla series. Although the King of Monster wasn't the first giant monster on the big screen, he would headline a long-running franchise, the longest of any movie series to date. Um, I was hoping there would be actually some news about, news about this, but they just said it was out, so that sucks. Um, Toho launched this officially. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's cool. Uh, the most interesting part, he went from a, a grim allegory for the nuclear bomb in, to a Japan-saving hero, not unlike Ultraman <laughs> as a franchise. Yeah. Godzilla has ventured into multimedia. He has battled the Avengers in a Marvel comic, which I did not know, and he received his own version of Jenga. For a limited time, fans can enjoy the franchise in a museum format. Um, yesterday I saw a thing on Instagram say uh, Godzilla is, an, is officially a uh, citizen, Japan citizen. Right? Yeah, that's dope. That is dope. They said there's food too, which is cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, I love Godzilla, man. This is all cool. Now, Alex, what do I have to do to get you there? What oh. do I got to do? Tell me. Tell me. How how much how much on Patreon t- until we go and vlog the look, Godzilla Museum? Look, man. Uh, these sponsors need to help us with this. <laughs> Maybe we reach out to the Godzilla Museum and be like, hey, we'll sponsor you. We'll sponsor hey, you. Man. We'll do content around the museum. And be like, oh, cool. So uh, how many subscribers oh, you got? Hey, that. that's not an important conversation we need to have, okay? <laughs> what's important is we show your story with Godzilla. Right? <laughs> oh, what's the figure that pa- the patrons need, Alex? Tell, tell me a number. Hmm. Uh, let me think. Because uh, I'm assuming we both have to go. Not ha- just me. We both have to go. We both have to vlog. It would take. Yeah. We would have to be there for at least two days. So that's that's airfare uh, and I, hotel. I, I, I would have to say I would have to say three minimum. Three three dollars. So if you go just, over to patreon.com slash one day just because we'll get lost. If you go over to the patreon.com slash you give us three bucks, we will go to Japan. <laughs> <laughs> three grand. That's what Alex anything, said. Anything. Okay. Anything you want to give us, I'll take anything. <laughs> Alex changed from three grand to guys, just really anything at this point. <laughs> <laughs> it'll, it'll go towards it, man. <laughs> we'll start a GoFundMe. I'll it's play. a stretch goal. <laughs> there you go. Oh my god, that was fu- that was fun. I really am curious what they put in the museum, though. That sounds really oh, cool. Sure, that sounds really cool. I'm hoping that they use that they put the first set from the 1954 Godzilla, and it's like a really small set, and they use the. Uh, an actual either i think it was a model or somebody dressed as as godzilla and it was just somebody walking around 
but it was it looked super. It was like a small city set. It wasn't like oh, uh, like a big set. You're talking about from like the original movies, right? Yeah, yeah from the original yeah, when movies. Yeah, it was just a stuff, dude yeah. in his suit drop kicking stuff. Yeah, that was awesome. Yeah. Or when he like grabbed his fist and shoved it through a building and like brought it up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was cool. Yeah, I'm, I love those. Alex, mm. that's what I've uh, shit I've seen on Twitter for the week. Now, usually at the beginning of the show, I throw you a question like what you've been playing. I'm going to mm-hmm. now change that to now, right now because we had biting commentary to give on the Apple News. Mm-hmm. So, Alex, I have one question for you. What is your what question? What have you been playing slash what are you going to play? I have been playing Destroy All Humans. You did it. He got it, ladies and gentlemen. He got it. Now, yeah. does it fill your high standards for this game it, it does because it like in people when i say this people are going to be like oh well i don't want it to be that but it's the nostalgia it feels like a uh, like a ps2 game but it's not as in like in a bad way okay. it, it's it, it's not a, like oh it's like oh the you know the controls suck or the right. graphics suck uh-huh. it actually it's it actually feels super smooth smoother than a lot of games i've played now interesting um uh, the, it looks great because it's uh, actually running 60 frames. Mm-hmm. Um, the com- the comedy is still there, but it feels like a PS2 game, as in you know you had you. It's in- so enjoyable and it's so comedic that it had that crude humor from the the that time. Right. And I, it's just so fun, and I'm like the achievements so easy. I'm I have half of them, and I played it only for a day. <laughs> you like good achievements at least that's good now let's say i'm um let's say i'm jeremy over listening to the easy achievers i love them i'm, I'm gonna go support them on patreon because i'm a good person and i want to get into heaven not saying you have to but i mean if you want to get into heaven you essentially have to give us money now let's say i'm a, i'm out there i'm like i like destroy humans as a ps2 game do i really want to buy it now alex does he buy it hmm if now has he ever played it before yes or no? yes right. yeah, yeah yeah so i'm i'm asking as a as a man who has very nice dreams of it do, do you recommend it to that man he, he's like yeah. oh that was very nostalgic of me i would like to play that again no no yeah i would if you've played it before you do enjoy the game i i mean 40 bucks is not bad for that game i mean it's so fun now now the i'm thing his is that... now i'm his evil brother jerome <laughs> I, no. I've never played Destroy All Humans. I've only seen it. Do you still recommend it to someone who may not have played it? I'm always going to recommend it, but <laughs> um, I it, it's depending on what system you're on because it is on PS4 and it was only twenty bucks there. Oh, was but, it on sale? Jesus. No, it was that's how much that's how much it was. But um, on PS4, it was the whole. I don't know if it was a was remaster. That the, was that it, the that was, that was the PS2 classic, right? Because it didn't it yeah, really. Yeah, yeah, it did the it did the PS2 to PS4 thing, so it like it, it was a little enhanced, and um, it had I think, a trophy. I, I think you're being s- short with that one. A little enhanced. Then the, the remaster looks great. The PS2 classic one that's twenty bucks looks like the PS2 game. No, 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 no. It was the not the remaster that just came out. The one there was one before. There was it's the PS2 to PS4. It was twenty bucks, and it doesn't. I mean, it doesn't. It doesn't look bad, and it has a trophy list and everything. But like it's. Uh, but then there's the new remaster. The remaster is worth the forty bucks. Okay. Interesting. But it all depends. Like for that one, with that with the PS4, you have the option if you want the 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 cheaper one, or which is just like a enhanced or if you want to complete full remaster okay 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 for the 40 all right but it's fun it's so much fun and other than that i mean i've been playing fall guys yeah now it's time for me to come in fall guys woo yeah. this is a good ass game dude this is a really fun very low skill ceiling which i appreciate um mm-hmm. I, I don't think you have to be masterful at the game to be able to win and have fun it's just oh, no, nonsense. Sure. If you like Wipeout, if you like any of those game shows where nonsense can occur and it's some of them are based on luck, this is the game for you. This was so fun. It's free on PlayStation Plus if you if you pay for PlayStation Plus. It's uh, on PC if you prefer it on Steam. I believe it's twenty dollars. I'm making that up, but I think it's twenty bucks. I can't remember. I'm sorry, but Alex is vibrating over there. Um, he, I think it's very good. It's definitely worth your time. Alex, did you enjoy it? Oh, for sure, dude. Yes, it's fun. it was I mean, very fun. There is some mini games that I'm like, oh, next, yeah. please. 
Yeah. But it, it's it's I mean it's it's the the hate of the game and you like you ha you have to go through through it cuz it's like Mario Party. Like you have those many games where you're like oh gosh. 100%. But it's so it's still so fun. 100%. I do think they need to increase the pool a little bit of mini games. Yes. Um and I do think there aren't some there's are some that aren't just aren't fun. Uh yeah. I want to bring up Rollout. Rollout is not fun to me, but there are, there's a bunch of ones that are like this is fine. The one there you have to run through the fake doors. I don't really love that one either because no, it's oh, really yeah. luck based. It's not really it's not really based on anything. But no, I, I but I get why some of these are there. Uh, but these I'm I'm excited. I, I literally I want to go play it right now. Like I I feel like I'm semi addicted to this game. It's so fun. It's one of those yeah. games though that you kind of have to play with a person. You don't have have to. But to me I, I have fun it's, when it's playing with somebody. Fun. And you have, yeah. like, someone with you talking, like, having that madness and jokes and be like, oh, my God, I'm trying to get up and I keep getting hit by these guys or something like that. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. it is fun. I, I recommend it if you have the time. If you have PlayStation Plus, get get, get it while it's, while, get it while it's quote, unquote, free. Um, mm -hmm. Like, go ahead and utilize that Plus if you yeah, have it. It's included it. with your Plus. Yeah, if you don't have it, I, I, if, you, if you've been wanting Plus, I would say it's worth getting for a few months just to, pl just to mess around see if you like it and then you can extend yeah. extend your membership if you end up actually liking it and want to keep the game or you can just outright buy it of course too after the free thing is done yeah. but I am very excited to go back to Fall Guys um, everything else has been the same we played a little bit of Call of Duty Call of Duty's Call of Duty uh, a lot of bugs mm -hmm. for some reason I don't know why they're not fixing bugs it seems like they're sitting on their hands on a couple things hopefully they go bug killing because there's a lot of bugs now but aside from that that's your easy achievers gaming podcast for the week of august 13th thank you so much for joining us now i know you're saying it's like oh, i don't want it to end it was so good how do i keep it coming now oh, i'm reading the hobbit how's that it's it's hard to keep track okay it, there's so much detail <laughs> hey tolkien left his details he like, made, he like made for, a literal world there, in I, history so well for everybody out there i am not a reader yeah like i don't i don't read but so but like i just been wanting to w watch the movies and i've been wanting to read the book so i was like you know what i'll go ahead and do it but i'm also, i'm reading the book as i'm listening to the audiobook just to help me out okay but goodness it, there's so much detail like earlier i was just trying to walk around clean up and listen to it and I had to rewind like five minutes just because I was like, I heard nothing of what you just said. <laughs> I get it. it it's it's, but a, it's good. It is it is really good. Token packs and stuff with detail, but but it's exquisite. Oh, sure. It's it's exquisite detail, and it does really paint a picture that he was really good at that. And of no, course, sure. he was really good at building a world. I mean, he made an entire history. So he he, he was an, an incredible creator. Right? He's the one of my huge especially helps. Yeah, yeah. You said he does voices and things. Yeah, yeah. He does voices for like all the people for like the dwarves. Yeah. For Gollum, like he actually like it makes he makes it feel alive, and I I really enjoy that. And on that note, ladies and gentlemen, go read The <clears throat> Hobbit, or go play some Fall Guys, or just live your best life. Thank you so much for joining us here on this beautiful Friday, or early if you're over on Patreon.com/slash/EasyAchievers. Now. If you're sitting there, you're like, oh my god, I want to support these guys. I want to make sure they make more content. You can, of course, head over to patreon.com slash YouTubers. Give us the dollar, give us the two dollars, give us the three dollars. That anything helps. Anything helps. That keeps us going. That gives you more content. That gives you even more. That gives us more utilities. I would love to buy some Premiere, but I need money. I need help with that. I need your help. I need you, if you remember that Uncle Sam poster from World War II, I believe it was. <laughs> I wanted to take a second to really thank you guys for joining us for this awesome episode, this jam-packed episode, the full hour of The Achievers. This was awesome. Again, remember, comment, subscribe, share, hit us up on Patreon uh, with private messaging for any questions, comments, concerns, thoughts, or ideas. Tweet us if you hate our opinions. Uh, and that's all for me. Alex, thank you so much for joining us. And thank you for listening. You have beautiful ears. Remember, go Chief. Go Chief. <laughs>